You are watching the Gospel Hour, a ministry of Gospel of Christ Baptist Church, located at Talamban, Cebu City, Philippines. We take you now to the pulpit as we faithfully proclaim the Gospel of Christ. And amen. Welcome, everybody. Let's turn our Bibles to the book of James. We're going to look at the first two chapters. I did not pick a particular verse, but we'll get there anyway, and uh, God will get the glory out of this. In the book of James, throw that away there, and uh, by way of introduction, James, tradition says that James, the brother of Jesus, wrote this book. Because of this, it is accepted as canonical. There are four men named James in the New Testament. The challenge today, whoever this James is, one thing is certain. He was used of God to write this book because God does not use unbelievers to write the sacred scriptures. All that wrote in the Old Covenant and the New Covenant had to be born again. Let's look at the testings of faith, the characteristics of faith, and the triumph of faith. Chapter 1, the test of faith. What are the purposes of test? Let's go to verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Verse 4. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Let's stop right there and let's pray. Father, once again, I pray your blessings on people today listening at live stream here in the assembly and throughout the world that people will get saved. Backsliders will come back to you. People that are saved will grow in Christ. We look forward for your return, dear God. We ask in Jesus' name now that the Holy Spirit would work through us, teach us all these things, dear Lord, that we need to know and to grow in. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. All right? Now, let's look at Romans 8.28 for a moment, and that will go along with this also. Romans 8.28. In the book of Romans, verse eight, uh, chapter 8, verse 28, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are called according to his purpose. Now, going back to James, and I want you to understand that there is a purpose for our test. To see how strong we are, how faithful we are, how weak we are. And let me tell you, I personally can get weak if I'm not in the Word of God. And I can get tempted just like anybody else because I'm still a sinner saved by grace. I don't walk on water. I wish I did. In fact, I don't like water. I remember uh, in the Navy, uh, in uh, training in, in boot camp, we had to uh, dive in the water and we had to swim around the pool. It was about this size here. I didn't make it the first time around and by the... Uh, by the time my class graduated, I had to be set back in another class. And the second time, I was determined that I was going to pass that test. And uh, finally, I did it. I still don't like to swim. Okay? Uh, so uh, that's, that's my problem. But I want you to understand, there is a purpose for a test. Let's look at this again in verse 2. It says, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. You know what I like about that? I can laugh in the devil's face. Ha, 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 ha. You're a fool. You're a phony. 
You're nothing compared to my God. Now, that sounds good here, doesn't it? But in reality, I do get banged around. He's a little sharper than me. But he's not as sharp as God, and he never will be. Thank God for that. Now, verse 4 tells us, uh, let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Now, you ladies, when you cook rice, do you cook it halfway and then take it off the stove and give it to your husband and say, here, now eat? No, you wait till that rice is cooked to perfection, to where it can be tasted and enjoyed. Not half frozen, not half warm, not half cold, but the right temperature. And any food that you put on the table, you want that food and ta uh, on the table to taste good. I like I, uh, my favorite places, you all know what they are, uh, 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 uh Burger King, uh, and, uh, Jolly Bee, and, uh, what can I say? Um, but I like food that's delicious, perfect. And here's what G, uh, the Bible is telling us, that in the test of faith, God wants us perfected where he feels, okay, it's time for him to move on, it's time for her to move on, I'm going to give her another test. She passed that one, he passed that one, now it's time to move on. So, and again, count it all joy. And again, in Romans 8, 28, God knows what's best for us, and I, I, I'm grateful that he does. Let's move on a little bit. The source of temptation. It's not God. Not God at all. Don't blame God if something happens to you. Verse 13. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. Now, you might want to say, well, what about uh, um, uh, Abraham? When he told Abraham, bring your son up here, tie him up, grab the knife. When you're ready, plunge him. I'm giving you a re uh, 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 the Denise version, but I believe you'll understand. And Abraham was submissive. Maybe in the back of his mind he says, well, it won't matter, my son's saved, and God wants him alive, and he'll bring him back to me. So I'll just put the knife in him, and I'll let God take care of the rest of it. I don't know. Maybe that's what went on in his mind. But he had the faith to believe God. And as he was going like this, God says, okay, stop. I know your mind, I know your heart, I know you would have done it anyway back off, you prove yourself worthy. So, look at verse 13 again, and he says, I uh, 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 let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempt he any man. What did he tell God, the devil? In Matthew 4, it is written. And when Job was tried, Job lost everything. Lost his family, his possessions. And what did he say? I came in this world with nothing, and I'll leave with nothing. The other day I was talking to a, a, a Christian family, and uh, I was telling them a story uh, that I heard about when I was in the Navy uh, during World War II. One of the ships in the Navy, U.S. Navy, was bombarded. All the men in that ship 
died. I don't believe there were too many that were rescued. I think they all died. Can you imagine the Navy man going up to the house? Hello, Mrs. Sullivan. I have some bad news for you. All five of your sons were killed in war. I cringe when I think about that. All five of her, her sons were killed, not just one. I can only feel the hot ache in my mind what that woman was going through. And as, if I understand correctly, one of the brothers had a son that was about a year or two old. He'd be about 76 years old now if he's still alive. Think about that. I don't know if that family was saved. But God does not tempt anyone. The devil does. He did it with Adam and Eve, and look where we are right now. We're in a mess. Every time I turn TV on, there's some kind of uh, uh, military action going on. Iran is threatening the U.S., and uh, other countries are threatening the U.S., and uh, it's coming. Be prepared for it. World War III is coming. It's coming. But we won't be here. If you're saved and you know Jesus Christ, you'll be in heaven. So, let's move on a little bit. I want to encourage you. Number four, uh, rather, number three. Faith obeys the word. Verse 22. In verse 22. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Now, can I squeal on me? Let me, let me tell you, uh, uh, I'm, I'm in the house. My wife is telling me to do something. Now, it's bad enough I'm wearing a hearing aid, but I don't hear everything she says. I only got to have done, or I didn't do it right in the first place. So, spiritually, we read here in verse 22, Be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only. Okay, honey, I hear you. Okay, God, I hear you. And then you run off the other direction. Now, what did God say I was supposed to do? Uh, oh, hey, God, can you tell me that again? I didn't understand everything. <clears throat> he could give you a good whack, but God is merciful. And we need to understand that do, being doers of the word means believing the Bible, receiving the word of God, and living it out as best as you can through the Holy Spirit. So we see here, and not hearers only. I wonder if when you go home today, and I point fingers at myself, can you remember anything I said? Think about that. Not that I'm important, not that I'm trying to p uh, point fingers at you. But that's quite interesting. Duh. What did Pastor say this morning? It's not what Pastor said. It's what God is trying to tell you right now. Out of the Word of God. Anybody can speak, speak here that's uh, called to preach and give you the message. But what are you doing with what God tells you to do with? That's what I'm asking you. That's what I'm challenging you and me. Faith obeys the word. Is there a blessing to come? Oh, yes. Verse 25. Verse 25. But whoso look at the perfect law, into the perfect law of liberty, and continue therein. We have liberty in Christ to do what God tells us to do. When we step outside that liberty, we're in big trouble. The demons in hell are trying to attack us. Satan says, go get that Christian. He's stepping out of the will of God. Here I am again inside the will of God. And in verse 25, and 
we, I want to look into the perfect law of liberty. I have a favorite verse. I'm going to uh, give that to you, uh, and I'll share it with you in Psalm 23. In Psalm 23, very simple. Now, I don't always do this right, um, so I'm kind of contradicting myself and putting myself in the, in the hot water, but I want you to see something here. The Lord is my shepherd, all well and good. I shall not want. I shall not do. I shall not be. I shall not want. I don't want to go where God wants me not to go, and I don't want to do what I want to do, just so I can be happy. I want God to get the glory out of everything I do. And I don't always uh, pass the inspection. I fall short every now and then. But I'm so glad that he can forgive me and I can get up again. And I say, okay, Lord, pack my bag up and let's give it one more time. Whoso look into the perfect law of liberty and continue therein. My former pastor passed away some years ago, and he was telling me a story that when he was in the army, he was a sergeant, and one of the privates made a big mistake. So the uh, lieutenant over him told uh, 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 my pastor, who was a sergeant at that time, take the men out for a 50-mile walk. 50-mile walk. What punishment that was. And my pastor, he, he said, he never forgot that. And so we see here, continue in the liberty that God has given us. He, being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Doesn't that challenge you? It challenges me. It challenges me because I know that should I fall short or I don't do it right, I can come to God and I say, God, I need your help. I didn't quite understand you the first time. Maybe I wasn't paying attention. See, when you pay attention to the will of God, the work of God, and the walk of God, he'll lead you in the right way and keep you there. Now, let's move on. Number four, faith removes discrimination. Chapter two, chapter two, verse eight, uh, verse one rather, verse one. My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. Somebody comes in here looking for spiritual help. And he looks like he crawled out of, uh, uh, what's that place in um, Manila? Uh, the dump there, I can't think of it right now. Anyway, uh, it's my duty not to look at the outward appearance of him, but the inward appearance of him. Some years ago, way before I was born, there was this woman named Ma Barker. And I can't remember where she lived at, but she was a mean, mean woman. She had three or four sons that were miserably mean. I don't know what happened to her husband, but those several sons of hers were mean people, grew up to be mean men. No character, no culture, no church, no God in their life. Then one day, she came to a church. And the people looked at her. And the woman got all upset. We don't want that woman in this church. So the pastor went along with that. I don't know if my Barker ever got saved. But I do know this. I cannot refuse anybody 
who comes to this church looking for salvation through the blood of Jesus Christ, looking for spiritual help. I might check them out and be a little wary if they say, I'm hungry, I need some money, uh, can you give me some money? That might be another story. I've, had, I've, I've been taken several times by people like that. But when they come looking for spiritual needs, I need God, I'm right there to help them. I don't care if they're half, uh, their, their, their dresses are raggedy uh, and, and they haven't taken a bath or, or the men haven't shaved for a month. I have to help them whether I want to or not. Jesus helped me Amen. June 14, 1976, when I came to him dirty and filthy and full of sin and walked away a few minutes later cleaner than a whistle. Think about that, people. Think about that. So we see here in chapter 2, we cannot discriminate against people. Now, I do believe in dress code. I do believe that a man should dress like a man, a woman should dress like a woman, and uh, what's right for a, what's, uh, what's a right dress code for a woman, and what's a, a right dress code for a man, and not, and not mix them up, and uh, a woman wearing a man's pants, or a woman, or a man wearing uh, a woman's blouse, I don't buy that. And there's something funny there. Uh, it's not, not from God. But I leave that between you and God. I want you to understand that God does not want us to have or be discriminative. Now, in verse 8 and 9, let's look at chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. In, uh, verse 8, if you fulfill the royal law, According to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well. But if ye have respect to persons, ye commit sin, and are convinced of the law as transgressors. So, who are we to look to somebody else? I remember uh, some years ago, uh, I used to get dressed up. Uh, and go out and wear a suit, and some wise guy would come along and say, hey, Peter, you look lousy in that outfit. I felt like a bow. You know, I just kept quiet and moved on. And uh, somebody may always say something. The best thing I can tell you is keep it between you and God. That way you won't have to apologize to anybody but God if you think aught of somebody. I've been on both sides of the fence, and I'm so glad several times I kept quiet, kept my mouth shut, and God just blessed me abundantly. So, faith, number four, removes discrimination. Number five, faith proves itself by works. Chapter two again, in verse 15, and 16. Uh -huh. okay. Chapter 2, uh, verse 15 and 16. I'm going to share it. All right. Uh, okay. If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding, you give them not those things which are needful to the body, what do it, what doth it profit? Someone comes to your house or even to the church and they're hungry. They haven't eaten. I've done that, given food. I've had one of the men, one of the ladies go out, give them a bag of food. I never see them again, but I know I did right. I gave them food, gave them water, bottles of water, and they went merrily along their way. Maybe one day they'll remember that. We can't turn our back on people in need. And again, we need to be careful about people coming in and saying they need this, they need that, when they're nothing more than, than con artists and liars. 
I remember reading a story. Uh, five men, four or five men, were coming to a church, a Baptist church, and uh, Pastor got we're uh, kind of shaky about why they keep coming. He investigated them. They were Mormons. They were trying to take men out of the church and, and, and have them come to their church. He threw them out and told them, don't come back here again. I'm a Baptist, not a Mormonist. 100% Baptist. All right, now let's move on. Number six, faith produces dependence on God. Do all to the glory of God. And let's get to verse 15 one more time. Uh, and uh, verse 15 one more time. If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food. Now let's go to 17. Even so faith, if it had not works, is dead being alone. What does that mean? Does that mean I'm not saved? No. Does that mean I'm not exercising my faith? I am saved? Yes. Faith, if it had not works, is dead being alone. Let's look at verse 18. Yea, if a man, a man may say that thou hast faith and I have works, show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. I can't show you my faith by just standing here all day. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. I gotta get out there and prove that there's a God that I believe in, a God that I love, a God that I worship, a God that I know one day will take me home to heaven and exercise that faith by actions and by my mouth. Faith, number seven, is waiting for Christ's return. Verse seven. Verse seven. And uh, we read here, do they blaspheme that worthy name by which ye are called? What I want you to understand here is keep on doing what God tells you to do and do it as best as you can and do it for the Lord, not for yourself. Look at verse 8. If you fulfill the royal law according to Scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself Ye do well. So, we see here, establish your hearts. Purpose yourself to do what God wants you to do and to be what God wants you to be. In conclusion, prove your faith is real by your works. Chapter 2, verse 14. What doth a prophet, my brethren, though a man say he had faith and have not works, can faith save him? What, what it means here is not that faith will not save you, but where are your works? You say you've got faith? Prove it to me. Show it to me. I need to show it to you that I have faith. I can't stand like a like uh, this spring right here. That spring is a spring. It's nothing else. And only works when the lights are on. That spring is dead when the lights are off. Keep your light shining for Christ and your faith growing and glowing for the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to turn for a quick moment. Uh, we'll get that in a moment. Uh, verse 16 uh, in chapter 2, verse 16. And one of you say unto him, Depart in peace, 
be ye warm and filled, notwithstanding you give them not those things which are needful to the body, what doth it profit? If you don't help somebody out that really needs help, shame on you. You blaspheme the name of God. They may never come to church again. They may never get saved. Let's look at Romans 15, verse 6 for a moment. Romans 15, verse 6. In Romans 15, verse 6, that ye with, may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the fa Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is part of what faith is all about, to glorify God, not yourself. And in verse 17 of chapter 2, in verse 17 of chapter 2, even so, faith, if it had not works, is dead being alone. Are you alive today? Do you have faith? Am I alive? Do I have faith? Then let's go out there and prove it to people that there is a God that is real and he's living in you. He's living in me. Go out and prove to the world, to the atheists. I get a big kick out of those people. They don't believe in God, but when they're in a traffic jam and ready to get into an accident, oh my God! By way of invitation, I want to take you to Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1 and verse... Acts 1, verse 8. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me in both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Now, let's look at 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Jesus Christ can change your life from a dead man and a sinner to a, a, a new life in Christ, saved by the grace of God through the blood of Jesus Christ. And in 1 John chapter 8, 1 John chapter 8, 1 John chapter 8 and verse 9. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Verse 10, if we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. I have a question to ask you. Is Christ in you? Is there faith in you? Frank, Pastor Frank will give the invitation in a moment. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Heavenly, Heavenly Father, my prayer and my desire and the desire of the brethren here is that many people will come to Christ right now and give their lives to you. People that are lost, people that are backslidden, people that are new in the faith, 
people that are A's in the faith, anybody out right now throughout the whole world, speak to the hearts of men, dear Lord. Reach their souls, dear Lord. Speak to them and let their soul know they need Jesus. Oh, Heavenly Father, have your way now. As Pastor Frank gives the invitation to you be all the praise and all the honor and all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for watching the Gospel Hour. Please contact us via Facebook if we could be a help to you in your spiritual journey. In the world full of darkness, the power of the Gospel shines through.